everybody and welcome back to my channel on this Wednesday morning, afternoon or evening across the world where you may be at. And today is a personal perspective video. It's about autism, accessibility, language and words. And this video was also inspired by my autism diagnostic service social worker called Trudy, who thought it'd be a good idea to share my experiences and to help educate people on a situation I went through recently. So yeah, let's get into it. Thank you to my autism social worker Trudy for giving me this idea and to encourage me to talk about this. Uh, recently, we've both been part of a autism group that is in charge of planning a autism strategy group for autistic adults in my local area. And this project is going to be taken on by another outside uh, company per se. And there's been a lot of language used that I've really struggled with to comprehend and to understand what it means and why we need to use it. But obviously I understand we have to have some professional language wording because of the subject at hand and also for the people who are going to come in and take this project on to further support us and get us involved. Obviously we have to have some form of professional rapport and language to make it more easier for the professionals to work with us. But at the same time, they're wanting autistic people like myself to be involved. And the problem I see with this is is that people like me who get overstimulated, over anxious with big words like procurement, admin, review, evaluation, these big words, I don't know what they mean. And every time these words are coming up, and every single time that we meet on this meeting, these big words are being thrown around. And to me, it's very overstimulating and anxiety provoking because I don't know what these words mean. I don't know why we have to use them. Obviously, that's to do with the project and the potential uh, people who are going to be buying into this project who need to know the best way to help us i guess but again it's me and my colleague had a private offline call to talk about this more in detail and we decided to talk about what we can make to do to make meetings more accessible for somebody like me or somebody else who's on the autistic spectrum like myself so during the phone call these are the tips and tricks that we come up with uh to have blue words so if you don't know what blue words are blue words are basically when you simplify the jargon words in a break in an easier format so it's like easy read you break down the words and actually explain them rather than just using the words and not giving an explanation so like at the back of the uh evaluation booklet or at the back of the mi minute minutes at the meeting you can write down all the words that people struggle with in blue and then just put a little brief explanation uh, next to them so that's one way we can do it also because people like me have sensory processing issues it can again take time to physically mentally process what's going on in my head for me to get to understand what the words are and why we need to have them words being used in the meeting at one time also again when it comes to sensory processing there's a lot of information in these meetings the meetings are quite heavy and are quite fast paced and i understand we have to do that because of time restraints and how much time the professionals have to plan this and how much time they've given up outside of their work hours to do this i totally understand that respect that but again for people like myself who are on the autistic spectrum it can be very very overwhelming when you've got one topic two topics three topics four topics five topics and it's bam 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 bang one after the other with all these heavy wording and so if we could slow the pace down a little bit and also another tip and trick that we came up with is maybe like uh, after the first topic have like a five minute cool down where we check in on people to make sure they understand or understood what that section is and then have the next section and then have another five minute cool down and then ask to make sure that people are caught up with what's being said what's being explained in that section and move on and versa versa to the point that we can understand that everyone's on the same page at the same point so again we have to think about time processing because obviously a lot of people with autism like myself are not be able to cope if the meetings are going to be bam 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 very very quick and i understand again it's down to time and job restraints i get that i'm not saying that we can't have a fast meeting but again if you're autistic and you're in a fast-paced meeting you're not going to be able to cope and the problem i have is with that is it gets very very overwhelmed when you're in these meetings and you've got multiple people talking you've got multiple people trying to say their points and it can get very very agitating and very overpowering so again for autistic people make sure that you have something written down before time or make sure that if you can't verbally communicate like i can right now make sure you're able to use a chat box or email to get your points across in that meeting so that your voice is heard but obviously in a non-visible uh, way so again it can be another way of visually communicating using the chat box emailing texting maybe making a quick phone call outside of that meeting to talk to the person that you need to talk to because again there's only so much communication i can do during the day so basically what i also mentioned in this 
after call meeting is that I only have a certain social energy limit and I start off with like kind of half a social box so you can say that I'm kind of here and then I have to plan for chores, I have to plan for videos, I have to plan for dinner, I have to plan my video tops of the week, I have to plan what I'm wearing and by the time I've done all that I'm completely flat empty so you see nothing left, I'm literally at rock bottom but during the day I'm really, I'm really at this and then I slowly I'm literally get to this so you have to remember not all autistic people have that social energy limit so you have to be very careful with how much time you take up of someone's day if they have autism also, also we agree what to do after this meeting is to make sure that we understood what has been said offline so if we need a private phone call an email a text just to make sure we've understood what the agenda was what the words were what is the next plan of action then to do that offline also if we move too fast again it causes problems with anxiety and panic because again each topic is bam 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 when you've got more than 10 people on this phone call which is what's happened recently with us it gets very very confusing because you've got one person talking then another person then another person then another person and it doesn't give me time to process all that's been said during that time frame of that meeting so again it can cause problems with communication anxiety eye contact that kind of stuff so again it can be very overwhelming with that side of things as well um also what things can we do to make meet online meetings that more accessible because someone like me on the autistic spectrum who is very anxious very nervous has to plan a lot of her time and her effort and a lot of her meetings i i need to make sure that i plan ahead of time so whether that's having the meeting written down in bullet points, having short paragraphs of information, having time to go away, think about it, process it, and then come back and give my opinion at a later day or that same day on a private phone call or email because, again, there is a lot of sensory processing to that meeting. These meetings are quite heavy for someone on the autistic spectrum. I do worry that there'll be a limit to how much time they're going to cooperate and communicate in these meetings because if you keep throwing these heavy words to someone with autism like myself, they're not going to understand, they're going to shut down, they're going to have anxiety, and it's no good. We want more inclusion and we want more involvement from autistic people themselves. And the more that these heavy words and the language used, it's not appropriate, it just isn't. And I think the problem is, is that I and somebody have to have the professional involvement and the professional language at the same time. You need to meet autistic people where they are. So again, it's having that balance act of where each other are to communicate. I think that's where the problem is because when you don't give enough time for someone like myself to communicate her needs or her voice or my ability to advocate, then we become kind of useless. And I want our meetings to be successful. I want um, I want them to be involved. I want autistic to be heard and to have our voices approached and listened to. So again, it's about communication. It's about how can we best support each other. It's a two-way process. So again, we did mention about also having it in bullet points, having short paragraphs, um, having a checkup uh, later on, like in a few days later. So maybe like my social worker could email me. She could call me and go, hey, Gemma, how are you? Did you cope? Like... Did you understand? And then we can obviously go back and forwards and I can chat to her about what bits I didn't get or why I didn't like it or why I've not attended certain sessions. Um, again, it's about treating each person like an individual because I found, again, that the meetings are very work-focused. It's very boom, 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 work-focused. I think each we have to remember each person is an individual. I'm an autistic person, so therefore I might need a bit more time to process and think about the agenda, think about the next meeting, think about what I want to say before time. Again, also it's about making sure you don't overwhelm a person with too much emails or too much text or because again, it's going to lead to sensory overburn, it's going to lead to anxiety and I think we have to be very careful when it comes to that kind of uh, professional environment. Also, I understand obviously that it's to do with a serious legal declaration so again we have to have the legal language and for the people who are going to be taking this project on I understand that it's all about timing and money and fundraising and that kind of stuff I get that I'm not saying that this is a bad thing but I hope you've enjoyed hearing my perspective on it please like comment share and subscribe and I will see you next video thanks for watching bye